Hey guys, this is a continuation of the previous video where we have started modeling the car and now it's time to finish off the entire model. In this video, we'll be focusing mainly on making the wheel and the grill which is present in the front side of the car. I will also make sure to touch on the smaller parts so that you do not miss out on anything. Towards the end of this video, I have a section on how to use collections and instances in Blender which can improve your workflow a lot especially considering all the new improvements that Blender 2.8 has brought to the table. If you haven't already, you can download the tutorial file including the model and the animations from my Gumroad account, the link is in the description. It will also sign you up to my weekly newsletter which you can cancel at any time if you want to. Finally, you can get 100% procedural shaders which also look very photorealistic and convincing from the Blue Inversion online store which I have just recently opened up. If you're watching this video months or years in the future, then it is super likely that Smart Shaders has expanded with many new categories and there will be other Blender add-ons available, so don't miss out and make sure you check out the store. And as usual, this is Shyan and you are watching Blue Inversion. Alright guys, so now it's time to make the wheels of the car and then we will proceed with the other details. First, I will get rid of all the other collections except the references. So I will hide them in the viewport using the outliner. Your outliner might be here, I have just arranged the whole thing a little bit. I will go into the right view, shift right click to place the cursor at the center of the wheel. Now you can see there are a lot of Tesla Model S wheels that have been changed over the years. I'm going for something a little bit simpler among these models so that I can show you a little bit less complicated way of modeling it. Although I would say this is a pretty, um, I would not say difficult but a bit convoluted to approach but once you get it, it will be fine. So I will press Shift A, Mesh, I'll add a circle, I'll click on this small menu here and change the vertices to 10. Also alignment to view. If I zoom out you can see the circle. Right now it really looks like a decagon because it is a decagon but once we will add the subdivision surface modifiers it will look like a circle. So I will scale it in and place it kind of there. Right now the corners are along the line of symmetry of this circle. I want the planar side to be there so I will rotate it. I'm doing this basically because all these spokes will be coming out of these planes that we have aligned with them right now. I will tab into the edit mode. You can see the vertices here. Let us extrude it, scale it down, extrude once again and basically we will fill this gap. Generally the approach is to keep extruding it until there's a very small hole and then you can press F to fill that hole but you can see that it's a N gone and it's not a quad by any means. And I said that I'll try my best to keep quads. So let's get rid of that. And I'll select these two diametrically opposite edges and press F. I'll press Ctrl R to add an edge loop here. Select this face, press F twice. Same for this side. Now let's select the whole thing. Press A and extrude. That should be fine. Now we have the central disk of the wheel. Let us go ahead and add a subdivision surface modifier. I will set this to 2. Ctrl R to add another ring. I will press Ctrl B. You can add bevel, a really small bevel there and add another loop cut in between. Now I will push this inside using G. Select this outer edge loop, push it outside a little bit, add crease to both of these edges. Now here comes the interesting part. Switch to face select, double click to select this ring of faces. Now I want to deselect every alternate face along this ring of faces. You can see that all the faces are selected and this face in particular is the active selection. If that's the case, you can just go into select, check a deselect and you can get rid of all alternating faces. So you need to select it in a way that, that this face is the active selection. Anyways, you can also select it by hand. It's not that much of a difficult task, but I'm just trying to show you some small tips here and there. Now if you press extrude, then you can see it goes along different bizarre angles. You can argue that you can press extrude and scale it. In that way it works, but 
once you want to rotate it along each axis then it becomes really strange so this one works if we rotate along the z-axis but as soon as we try to rotate this along its normal it doesn't really work so we can switch the transform orientations and switch to normal now you can see if we press z while rotating it's its actual normal now if we select two faces and rotate along the normal you'll see that the normal is not of each individual face but in fact it's a estimated middle normal for both of them so it still doesn't serve our purpose because then we need to select each of them individually in that case we can change the transform pivot it is currently in median point we can change it to individual origins for this case and now if we rotate along the z-axis you will see all of them are rotating individually independently of each other along their normals so that's what we want i will undo all of the shit that we just did now we can again do the checker deselect really quickly and we have this configuration here because that is not affected by the undo we will extrude and just pull it out and it will follow this behavior i will scale it along the x-axis i'll show you from the other perspective scaling along the x-axis of individual faces extrude once again this time if you want to scale it along the x-axis you can see that it is kind of flipped so we have to use the y-axis this time and i will push it inside you might want to exaggerate the bulge a little bit more but either way i think this should be fine enough now let's extrude once again now we will rotate this final faces along the z-axis that means the normals then scale them along the y-axis scale them along the x-axis a little bit i'll press x and delete the faces so this is what we have got so far it doesn't really look similar but we will get there now manually select the other remaining faces i will press e and extrude I'll extrude once again. This time I will scale along the x-axis and make it a little bit thinner. Then scale it on the y-axis a little bit. Extrude. Kind of maintain a circular arc here. Scale along the y-axis again. I'll try to maintain the thickness. Scale on the x-axis a lot. And then press X to delete the faces. I will select these two faces here. I'm selecting these faces using the C key on the keyboard, it is called the circle select feature in Blender. Now I will switch to the edge select mode and get rid of this edge in between. Using circle select mode, you can middle click to deselect. Now I will right click and remember loop tools from part 1. If you are not sure, then I highly recommend you should watch part 1 because we covered a lot of basics there. I will select circle. You can see that some of them have been rotated in a strange way, so I will rotate them back and make some manual changes this seems to be better again select these faces this time we will press I on the keyboard to inset these faces repeat it once again and now we can press E on the keyboard to extrude it inside you can see that the spokes in the reference image they are kind of bent in the middle in the anti-clockwise direction so I will go ahead and add a slight indication of that I'm adding edge loops here now we'll go into vertex select mode and turn on x-ray then I'll press C on the keyboard and use the scroll wheel to increase the radius I'll select all of it decrease the selection middle click to get rid of the middle so now we have selected these so now when we rotate, you will see that they are still following the normals because we have not changed it here. So now we can switch back to global. Also, we can change the transform pivot point to median point. Now we'll rotate it very slightly along the anti-clockwise direction. Now we will finally add some crease to this. Follow what I'm selecting. So now we are done selecting. I'll press Shift E to add crease. 
Now generally when I'm adding crease, I do not want the clutter. So I will press Alt Shift Z to get rid of overlays. And then I will press Shift D to add the crease. Now for the outer rim, I will select this edge loop, duplicate with Shift D, scale it up, go into the top view, move it along the x-axis, extrude along the x-axis, switch to face select mode, I will extrude the whole thing, I will scale it a little bit along the x-axis. Now let us add some crease to this, right click, shade smooth. That should be fine. We can maybe add some more edge loops here to make it more pronounced. Now you can see that we have some round bolts kind of thing here. For that we'll be using spheres, but not the actual sphere primitive that comes with Blender. We'll be using a rounded cube. That's easy to make. You just need to add a cube. I'll scale it down. Add subdivision surface modifier. Crank it up to three. Then select the cast modifier. Set the factor to 1 and then just apply the both. Now we'll select this mesh as well. Press Ctrl J to join them. Now if you go into edit mode, you can hover over this and press L. That will select the sphere and move it along. I'll just place it here quickly. I'll duplicate this and do the same. Now another thing to notice is that we have a disc kind of thing going on behind this wheel. I'm not, a, I'm not an expert in cars, so... Don't quote me on this, but I don't really know what that is, but we'll make it since it's there. I'll go into edit mode because I want to keep all of this a single mesh. And I will just duplicate this. And then scale it up. Since this part of the wheel will not be visible from outside, so I'll just keep it like that. I'll get rid of these so that I can work on the back surface better. Hide them with H. Now I'll duplicate this once again, move it along the x-axis, get rid of the middle and I'll give it some depth by extruding. Maybe add some crease here. And maybe we can take some creative freedom and add a relief kind of sort of thing. Now I'll take some more time to refactor the whole model, maybe redo some of the parts if I don't like them. Uh, basically, it's all about taking the reference into consideration and making further changes. So you take your time, maybe redo the whole thing. So I'll come back with a better version. So this is what it looks finally. I have redone some of the parts, as you can see. Overall, didn't have too many big changes, but really small details here and there. Now it's time to move on and make the tire for the wheel. So I have loaded up a reference image for the tire and as you can see I have scaled it up so that it matches the wheel model that we have already made. There is a general method of doing tires in Blender. We'll be dividing the whole design into a very small unit that repeats. So we'll make that model and then repeat it using an array modifier, wrap it around using a curve modifier and another curve modifier to define the curvature in the lateral direction. So let us get started. I will zoom in here and I will look for a place where perspective has not yet kicked in. You should not use this kind of a section of the tire because it has foreshortening due to perspective. Kind of try to use the central part of the tire for modeling the unit of the design. I will add a plane, switch the alignment to view, scale it down. I will delete all the other vertices and start with one. Now I will duplicate this with Shift D, move it along the Z axis, place it here. Select both of them, extrude, scale along the Z axis and make sure you do this to both the vertices at the same time. Do not extrude separately, otherwise things will not match up when you will be using the array modifier. Whatever modeling we do for this part of the unit design, we have to keep in mind to maintain similar symmetry along both of these sides. Now if you take my personal opinion, that seems to be a really daunting task and this is a beginner's video, so I'm just going to duplicate this. And let's see if we can keep duplicating and find a way to get rid of such a hassle.
So this is what we have here. I will get rid of the reference image quickly. I will hide it in the viewport. So let us start joining these edges and form a mesh out of it. Now I will select about 5 of these. Right click, loop tools, loft. I will repeat this for about 5 of these at a time. I am doing this part wise and not by selecting all of the edges together because loft does not work that well if you select too many edges then it doesn't understand which way to join them. Now instead of right clicking and selecting loop tools from here all the time since the last operation we did was loft you can actually select these edges and press shift R and that will repeat the last action that you did. As you can see I have missed this one here so I will switch to face select delete this face switch back to edge select and use loop tools here. Now that we are done making these two parallel streams of faces we can join them by using bridge double click on these two edges and once you've got them selected you can press ctrl e on the keyboard and it will bring this edge menu and you can find bridge edge loops from here and that will join them really nicely. This doesn't work all the time but bridge edge loops works really well when you have two edge loops which have the same vertex count. Now let's bring back the reference image from the outliner. I will turn on extreme mode, switch to face select mode. Now we just need to select the faces which correspond to the places which are kind of depressed or pushed inside in the design. Now as you might have noticed this design right here this does not repeat as frequently as its counterparts since it doesn't repeat itself as frequently we have to make a bigger unit design for this and it might get a little bit complicated because this is a beginner's tutorial so ignore this fact we will be repeating it as frequently as the other ones just to maintain some simplicity. Now the next step would be to inset them. In order to inset these edges you can press I. Now you can see that the faces are also being inset along the boundaries which we do not want. Repeating them using the array modifier will not look right. For that press B while you are in the inset mode and that will get rid of the boundary inset. I will click to confirm it. Let's get rid of the reference image once again. Now I will extrude this inside. Select everything with A. Press shift N to recalculate any normals. Select these outer edges and press X to delete them. So now that we have finished making a single unit of the design we can use the curve modifier to add the lateral curve to it. I will go into the top view, shift A, curve, bezier. You can see that the curve has these handles. You can scale them, rotate them just like vertices. Now you can see these handles have two separate ends and you can kind of scale them down or scale them up to change the curvature radius. So that helps a lot. Just like in Photoshop you have uh, Bezier curves I guess. It's a similar thing but this time for 3D modeling so I hope you'll find it intuitive. I'll select both these handles. Right click and subdivide. I'll get rid of this handle. I'll press X and vertex. I'll select this one, extrude, rotate it. I can maybe push this inside a little bit. I'll extrude once again. I'll delete the handle at the center. Select all of these handles with A. Press Shift D to duplicate. Right click to let go of it. Then press Ctrl M. This turns on the mirror. And then if you press X, then it mirrors along the X axis. I will move it. Place it kind of at the same place as the other one. I will select these two handles and press F to join them. Now you can see that we have the curve joined here. Now, I want a slight bulge. So I will select these poles of two handles. First I will bring them closer to each other. Scale along the X axis. And then I will push them along the Y axis to add a bulge. So after taking some more reference I came up with this. So take your time, make it as much perfect as you want it to be. Anyways, now we can move on and select this one. Our original design. Alright, so now we can click on add modifier and we will add a curve modifier now. I'll take the object picker and select this curve. The X axis seems to be the correct axis already. So I will grab and move it along the X axis. Now we need to do a few more steps to make it look perfect. But before that, let us add some bevel to this. 
because the angles are looking really sharp and it looks really unnatural. So I will just go ahead and add a bevel modifier. You can already see out of the box that it added some bevels. Now I want the utmost control on which edges will get beveled. Now in that case I have to scroll down and set the limit method to 8. If you see closely we are left with the original mesh no bevel at all because we have not set any edge to have any bevel weight so just like adding crease bevel weight can also be added to an edge and that will determine how much bevel strength it will have now we will go into the edit mode with tab you can see the object location changed because we moved it along the x-axis during the whole curve modifier thing so don't worry about that that is normal now we'll deselect everything and switch to edge select now select all the edges that I'm selecting. This will be the places or edges which will have bevel effect. Make sure you select this edge as well. Although it sounds counterintuitive, but selecting this edge will make sure that the beveling works perfectly along these edges and there's no visible seam. Once you're done selecting all of the edges, you can right click, select edge bevel weight. I will add a bevel weight of 1. Now if you go back into object mode. Now you can see we have a lot of artifacts going on here. I think that's because of the normal calculation. So I will go back into edit mode. Make sure I've selected everything and press shift N to recalculate normals. Now you can see it looks better. I'll go back into the modifiers tab. Select the bevel method to width. You can change the width from here. I like to keep it really low. That looks much better. I will also set the outer milter type to arc. And since there are no more visible artifacts going on, so I'll keep it to that. But once you right click and shade smooth, you will see that we do have a lot of artifacts. Now you can fix this issue by clicking here, harden normals. Now you'll see nothing happens. Now if you scroll down, you'll see you have this message here that you have to enable auto smooth. So let's go back into object data properties and enable auto smooth. You can play around with the angle but generally 30 degree angle works fine. Now we are done with the bevel part, we can get back and work on the curve. Now the first thing that you need to check is you have to select this curve and under the curve properties, you'll see the resolution is really low by default. So you can see how much that affects the whole curvature. Set this to something really high, 200 will be fine. So now we can go ahead and select our unit design once again and go into edit mode. I will select this last edges, scale them along the x axis. Now in the object mode, you can see that although it got longer along the x axis so that it covers the entire curve, but it lacks subdivisions in order to follow the curve properly. So let's go back into edit mode. I will add some loop cuts here. Control R, I will add 30 loop cuts, 30 loop cuts here as well. And for the middle, we will not be having too much curve going on. So we can get away with lower subdivisions, but still you need to add some. Now, if you go back into object mode, you can see that it curves nicely. Now it might get a little bit confusing in case you are not very familiar with the modifier stack because we'll be adding a lot of modifiers. But if you keep up closely, then things will be fine. Now I will select this curve and you can see we have the origin here. Now we have to make sure that the circle curve that we use to wrap this whole thing around the tire or the wheel, that circle curve also has to have its origin at the exact same place as this curve. So the simplest way to do that would be just select this curve, shift S, Cursor to selected, that brings the cursor to the origin. Nothing happened here because it's already there. Now you can press Shift A, Curve, Circle. Now it will add the circle curve at that origin. Now, we will go into the right view, change the alignment to view, because we obviously want the circle to be this way. Now I will select all of this and place it at the center. In fact, 
Let us just move it this way. Now I can scale this and put it where I want to. This should be fine. I will hide this for now so that we can view this properly. Now I will select the unit model again. Make sure you push this bevel modifier to the last in the stack. No matter what modifiers we add, adding the bevel modifier at the last always helps. Now let us add another curve modifier. I'll push it up, give it a name. Let's call it circle and the first one Bezier. Now I'll use the object picker and use this circle. Now let's keep changing the deformation axis and see which one fits well. Minus Y seems to fit well. Let's come back to this later in case we face any issues. Next I will add the array modifier and this should go right at the top. I will disable all the other modifiers in the viewport. Now you can see we have this relative offset here. Set all of that to zero and check which one actually helps us align the array along the vertical axis. So this one seems to work. Use this value here to keep it as close as possible. I'll switch the wireframe mode. That helps me see it better. I recommend typing in your values because that gives you more precision. Now you can see they're pretty close. Now if you click on merge, the default distance already merges them together. Now you can just increase the count from here. I will keep it at this much count and let's go back and enable the modifiers one by one. So this modifier works well, no problem at all. Now the second modifier. Now this one seems to work fine as well. That's great. Now you can see that we have some jaggedness here. Same reason, you have to select the curve, go into the curve properties and increase the resolution to something like 200. Let's select the unit again. I'll go into the modifier stack and increase the count. A count of 69 falls short, but if you add one more, then it intersects with each other at the ends and that's bad. To fix that, I'll select the circular curve that we have and scale it. And while I'll be scaling it, I'll focus here. Now you can see the gap decreasing. I'll zoom in as much as I can. Now you cannot merge it without any modifiers. So we have to add a modifier called weld. Let me go ahead and add a cavity so that you can really view it properly. Now I hope you can see the seam here, although it's still a little bit uh, almost not visible, but I hope you can see it. Now if I can toggle the weld, you can see that it vanishes. The final step will be to unhide the wheel itself. That also unhides the reference image. Let's get rid of it now. So I refined it a little bit more and this is what we have here. Let's go into the outliner and make some changes. Now you can see that I call it the wheel, this metal thing that will be there in the middle, the tire, that's just what we made, and the radius circle is for the tire. Now I will select all of this and move it with M to a new collection. Let's call it wheel. Next, I will add an empty. Let's add the cone. Scale it down to meet the radius of the wheel. Let's give it a name. I will call it wheel control. Now what I want to do is I will select these three objects. Then I will shift and click on this empty. If I press control P, set parent to object and keep the transform. So it will not change positions. Now if I move this empty, it moves the whole wheel together. You can rotate and do anything and it does that to the entire wheel system. I use parenting a lot. Parenting is a pretty basic idea uh, in order to organize things like this. And I can still move them individually, but that would still retain my control over the whole thing as a, as a new unit. All right, so let's move this wheel control thing into the wheel collection as well. Awesome. I'll minimize this. And now we have a wheel collection and also we have parented it to this empty for control. So once we have the entire wheel done, since we'll be needing four copies of this, instead of selecting everything and using shift D to duplicate, 
we can use another feature called Instances in Blender. In that way, Blender only has to maintain one copy of the actual mesh and then you can kind of make copies of it. You won't be able to edit each and every copy in edit mode, but you can rotate them and it can have different transformation and scale. It also helps in organizing the whole thing. If you want to make one change to the wheel design, then you can do that in the master wheel that we have already made. And then the changes will update in all the instances. Now collections and instances are now one thing in Blender uh, ever since the 2.8 update, I believe. So if you want to have instances in Blender, you have to make a collection of that object or objects first. Then if you shift A and collection instance, then you can find all the collections that we have available in the scene. In this case, we have the wheel. Now if we add the wheel here, you can see that this is the control object, the empty. So you can select this and move it around. But you can see that this is kind of inconvenient that we have a distance between the empty and the wheel. Why is that? That is because the original collection that we have here, it is centered at an offset instead of being at the world origin. So what we need to do is we need to select this parent object. You have to press shift S cursor to world origin and then shift S selection to cursor. That will take the whole selection to the world origin. Now if we press shift A, I will just move the cursor a little bit so that it doesn't coincide. If we press shift A collection instance wheel, then you can see we have another wheel here and the empty is also lined up properly. Now you can change the rotation and everything, the scale, but it won't change here. So you can have as many instances as you want. And also, let's say we select this one and we update something here, then it also updates there, as you can see. There's one downside that if you have uh, instances of this, each individual instance cannot be edited in the edit mode. In fact, you can see there is no edit mode here. So although there are pros and cons of using this method, I think instancing in this context of using wheels for a car is absolutely fine and we will go ahead and do that. So we will keep this at the world origin, unhide the car, I will also unhide the reference image. Shift right click to bring the cursor here, collection instance, wheel. I will make any necessary changes, I will do the same for the other one. I will get rid of the car body. So you can see now we have the four car wheels. But this car wheel is now redundant, right? So how can we hide it? But before I go into this, I would like to organize the workspace a little bit. I'll join this. Get rid of the reference image for now. And for once, let's change this to the outliner. So right now, as it stands, we have a wheel collection that contains the original mesh. And we have four wheel instances. Now what we want is we want to hide this collection but still retain the instances both in the viewport and in the rendered view. So what I just did it works in the viewport but it doesn't hide the original mesh in the rendered view. Now you might want to go here enable this now this gives you the option to hide things in the re final render as well and you might think that doing this will solve the issue and we will not see the original mesh but we'll see the instances but it doesn't work like that at least the current version of blender doesn't work like that although in the viewport you can still see the instances but once you hit f12 and you do the final render you will see none of the wheels show up just because you hit the original collection that is the wheel collection so the current workaround is to add another collection so I'll right click and add another collection I will call it hide source and let me enable this for once. We need to put this wheel collection inside this hide source collection and we will hide the hide source collection. <laughs> okay, that sounded really confusing. So we need to hide the containing collection. So whatever you want to call it, hide source is what I call it right now. So you, you just need to hide that one. This will hide the original mesh, but it will keep the instances. Now let me bring back the car body. So, so far, this is what we have made. And now let's move on and let's see how we can do the other details of the car. Let's organize this place a little bit again. I'll bring the properties here. 
also another one for the UV editor I will load in another reference image we have the grills pattern here so I'll go into the front view shift click at a far place so that we can work on it properly now for this design we can hand model each unit of course but I will make your life a little bit easier by enabling an add-on I think I already have it enabled so if you were confused why my menu has so many things because this is an add-on in blender you can go into edit preferences under add-ons just search for extra the add mesh add-on called extra objects enable that one and this will give you access to all these extra objects that you can find from the shift a menu under mesh now all the way down to extras you can find the honeycomb object so add that one from the menu here i will change the alignment to view number of rows and columns to one i'll change the edge width now i will merge these two vertices at the center with m let's repeat that now we need to rotate the whole thing by 90 degrees and now you can see from the reference image that we need to stretch it along the x-axis let's right click set origin to center of mass next up i will go into the modifiers tab add modifier array i will not use the relative offset because it it doesn't really work in the long run it really causes you a lot of troubles constant offset on the other hand really makes it simple so i'll move it along the x-axis right now and place it this way i will zoom in and switch to the wireframe mode try to align them as much as possible let's add another array modifier constant offset this time along the y-axis increasing the count value on this array modifier adds more element in the vertical direction as you can see so let us call this array height then i will add another array modifier set this to constant offset along the x-axis now we have the grid now if you want you can select the unit select the inner ring scale it down and that will change the entire thing so it's really easy to edit the thickness if you want now if i go into the perspective mode you will notice that it has really no thickness so i will add a solidify modifier to this before that let's call it the width let's add a solidify modifier increase the thickness if you select the whole thing in object mode you can scale it down so things are really convenient if you have this kind of a setup so now i'll grab it and bring it in front so before i move ahead with the grills let's make the front part of this car so that we can fit the grill properly so for this part i think only the time lapse will do because we have already covered the basics like extruding moving and all that sort of stuff and in case you are just watching this video for the first time then please watch part one because we cover much of the basics there and as you might have already noticed i've added this weird little piece of metal in the front of the car which is not there in the reference photo and that is because i didn't want to include the tesla trademark and logo that's a gray area in licensing and trademark kind of stuff let's not go there so if you have better idea because this is not the best design i could have come up with but i i just phoned it in so if you have a better idea you guys can stick with that all right so now i will scale it down to match the scale in the reference image seems like we need a lot more of this so i will go down into the modifier stack add some width and also height i'll push it in now it is already apparent that we cannot have the straight grill here we need to bend it and let it follow the curvature of the car i'll go into the edit mode of this part of the car and from the modifier stack we have this subdivision as the last modifier i'll turn on the cage with this button so we have all the modifiers applied in the edit mode not really applied permanently it's a temporary way to view the things so i can select the whole edge here i will use shift d to duplicate it press p selection to make it a separate object now i'll get rid of the solidify modifier i will apply the mirror modifier also get rid of the subdivision surface modifier so this is what we have now i'll go into object 
convert to curve from mesh. So now we have a curve here. As you can see, we might want to use a subdivision surface now. So I will go and add a subdivision surface modifier to smooth it out. Now I did all this so that I can select the grill and add another modifier to it. I will add this before the solidify modifier. Pick up the object. Now one more thing before we move on. The origin of this curve that we just made out of the car is still at the center of the car. We do not want that. So I will go into edit mode. Select one of the vertices. Press shift S. Cursor to selected. Right click. Set origin. Origin to 3D cursor. So now you can see we are getting what we wanted. So here we go, this looks fine by me. You can spend more time and refine it as usual, but I'd call that finished. At this point, I'm just going to show you the time lapse of the rest of it. So the basic principles of scaling and rotating the objects, extruding, crease, bevel, maintaining proper topology with quads. That's about it for the modeling part. And you can see that I'm changing a lot of the designs and I'm not really following the Tesla S model. I was not really enjoying the complexity of the headlights there. And since we'll be having a glass covering over it, ray tracing it will be really noisy. So I went with this really simple design, not much going on at all. And for smaller things like this, the smaller details that make up the car, we cannot really rely on the blueprints anymore. So at this point, I would really recommend you go out and find as many reference photos as you can. And for some general modeling advice, I would say that if you're trying to model something like a car and you find it too intimidating to approach, uh, in case you haven't really modeled something like that before. So I would recommend that you focus on the basic shape of the car without paying much attention to the details. So maybe take two or three car references and quickly model the basic shape. Maybe take three, four hours per car and just, just build the basic shape. Do not add wheels, do not add any details because I believe that the biggest hurdle for beginners to make a car would be that approaching something like a car which has so many smooth curves and that is the biggest hurdle. After that, adding the details will be really easy because you have some pretty basic technical steps to take to make the details, especially the wheel. It's really easy to make once you get the hang of the steps. But for the car body, it's a really organic process of being a better modeler. So put in your hours and put in some practice behind it. Once you get a hang of that, then adding the details is just really easy. Congrats on reaching the very end of this tutorial and if you have any kind of doubts or issues you can leave them in the comments and I always answer them so see you there.